that I produced, that I spent time working on, I like to, to pay so much attention to the introduction to the first two minutes. That makes everything worthwhile. That makes everything that I do on film, everything I do in the studio, everything I'm doing with Magic, it makes it worthwhile. I absolutely love, love, love getting creative with the dynamics that I'm kind of surrounding myself with, which is a deck of playing cards, a card table, two cameras, and mo most importantly, my studio, my own studio, my own place where I'm uninterrupted, where I can allow myself as much creative freedom and creative time as I can possibly have. Now, I've, it's taken me a long time to get myself into a position where I can have this. I'm, I, I feel very fortunate and I'm thankful and grateful every day for my life. Um, but this is my life. So I lock myself in the studio and I'm creative the whole way. I live this, this is what I live. Those first two minutes that you see at the, at the beginning of all of my YouTube videos, that is where I come alive. That is where my joy is, that's where my love is. I love, love, love just making creative, expressional videos, whether it doesn't even include cards or not. Uh, obviously, usually I try to, to make it revolve around playing cards because this is where my passion is. This is where my digital fixation is. I like to mix up a little bit of performance, a little bit of table performance, playing card deceptive performance with exposure. I always say this as a teacher and also a performance artist, specifically with deception, it's very important that I show you what's going on and also that I try my best to, to tell you just how beautiful sleight of hand is. I truly believe it is, and in most cases, when you see the mechanics of deception, when you see the sleight of hand, you agree, you have to agree. When you see something like uh, a palming technique or a switch, when you see it exposed, it is such a, a satisfying thing to experience, uh, whether you're watching it or actually executing it. If you can be the one executing that, performing that, there's a reward that you get from that. Not from the audience reacting or not from what anybody says, but from seeing what you're able to do 
This is a very secret and invisible art that we perform, that we demonstrate, that we execute. It's, it's invisible. Nobody's supposed to see it. And there's a real sadness to that. So I'd like to bring the exposure into my performance and make it part of my performance. And it's a very difficult thing to try and get right without just blatantly giving anything away. Like I wouldn't just reveal something for the sake of re revealing it. It has to be a beautiful thing. My friend Doug McKenzie, we're going back a few years, he had this bill switch where he takes like a, a dollar bill. If you could really do a bill switch, you would just hold it like this and then it would change. I've always had beef with the idea of folding it up and then unfolding it because when you fold it really small, it's too obvious what's happened. Obviously, you're folding it small enough for you to switch. It's too obvious, but Doug McKenzie's version of this, his idea, it's the cleanest I've ever seen to start with. It's incredible. But he showed me the performance right in front of me. Then he showed me the trailer that he made and they're both beautiful things. Then he showed me an over the camera version that he made to show you what's going on in, behind the scenes. And it was one of the most beautiful moments I've ever seen in Sleight of Hand. It's incredible for us to experience and to see and to demonstrate what's going on behind the scenes without just saying, oh, here's how it works. There's a serious art to that and I try to I try to do that as much as I possibly can. I know I don't always I don't always do it correctly. I know it's not always perfect, but if you're aiming for perfection, you're gonna land somewhere nearby. You are going to do, or you're gonna land on that journey somewhere where it can be recognized as, as trying to be perfect. Maybe if you're lucky, you'll end up with something beautiful, something perfect. But to the point, the introduction videos I make, um, that's where my heart is, that's where my passion is, that's where my love is and I usually just demonstrate a mixture of sleight of hand and then exposure so that you can see how beautiful the mechanics are but I don't always teach everything that's in there usually because a lot of it can be easily figured out and easily just, just kind of reverse engineered or I'm just exposing it so you can learn it there and then there was a move that I did on the EPH video um, it was a card switch. There were two card switches in there, but that everybody was uh, seemed to ask about. The first one is kind of a modification, a variation of Chris Ramsey's slip shift. I just changed the concept of it and changed the camera angle and also kind of modified the way my hand moved a little bit. But if you watch it carefully, then watch Chris Ramsey's slip shift, then you can see what it is. I'm just changing the story of it so it better fits my table situation. The second, the second switch in there, forgive me for if I get this wrong, it's Dan or Dave book, maybe it's Derek Delgado has something to do with this, this is just my memory working from the book, if an octopus could palm and I'm pretty sure it's called Undertow, I'll probably, I can hear a lot of people screaming already, you're wrong, it's not that, but check out the book, it's an incredible book. Um, and also in the edit too, when I'm editing those introduction videos, there's a lot of deception happening, not in a way that I'm trying to deceive you, but deceiving the edit to make it work better for uh, the actual purpose of the, of the video, which is just an expression. So sometimes it's sped up in the right place, sometimes it's slowed down, but not where you might think. Like if I'm doing a sleight of hand, I won't speed it up so you can't see it. That's not what I'm saying. I might speed up a boring moment just, just to get to the right beat in the music. And it feels strange to kind of talk about this because I, I feel like my real secrets and, and the secrets that I'm the most proud of are in the edits, um, not deceptively, but for the sake of making expressional art. So then videos in the beginning, the two minute section before the video, I don't usually teach the things in there, but in this case, so many people are asking about moves from those introductions that I thought I might just show you a few bits. Uh, so this is one of those, this is a very kind of simple, no pressure video. Where I'm just gonna expose a few things and show you a few things. But Charlie, my battery's running out in this camera, so I'm gonna change the battery and then we'll, uh, we'll get to it. I'm gonna expose some things. By the way, for people who haven't seen my card through table called Breach, I'm gonna show you some of the gimmicks from that. So maybe you wanna go watch that video first, then come back, and I'm gonna show you a few different things that you can do with these two 
gimmicks. So to begin with, and also these tricks that I'm gonna show you right now are kind of just for the camera. They're just for the sake of demonstrating um, an expression of deception. So you can't really do these in front of people. That being said, there's a few lapping ideas that I, I use in front of people all the time, especially the tattoo studio where I've got the desk and I can sit down and I've got my lap, or where I take my savant with me, which is kind of a shelf that fits under a table. We'll talk about that at a different point in my YouTube. In my YouTube videos, Charlie, right. So these are the uh, the gimmicks from uh, the Breach video, which are two red sevens and they have two magnets. So there's a magnet here and a magnet here inside this card. So this is two cards stuck together and this is the same thing and they're lined up perfectly so that when they're together, it kind of looks like one playing card. If you want to know how to build this, head over to the Breach video and uh, yeah, spend some time with that. It's one of my favorite tricks of all time. You can see how beautiful it is. Uh, um, if, I, if I don't mind saying so myself, Charlie. So these can be used for so many, so many cool tricks. And one that I used in this video introduction is, so I'm gonna use this seven and I'm gonna cover it over the nine of club like this so you can't see it. I'm gonna put the other magnetic gimmick on top of the deck here, right on top of the deck. It, and it doesn't matter about the discrepancy of this being uh, a Charlie Madison deck and this being a Black Roses casino. It doesn't matter because you're not going to see this gimmick. This is just for the sake of this video performance. So that's going to go here. I'm going to take the seven heart from the Black Rose th th deck and I'm going to put it face down in the middle. Uh, this allows me to create a flow in the trick that's going to take your eye away from the deceptive moments and it's going to confuse you a little bit when you're trying to backtrack how the hell did you do that what just happened where did the seven hearts go because there's a solution i'm offering a solution when i spread the deck so nine clubs and then seven hearts i got the magnet here if i just take this over that card now it picks up the seven of hearts and we have a change so it looks like a, a clean color change why the hell would my hand be going over that card? I'm not gonna do the magician thing. I'm gonna teach you a very magician-y thing in a minute, but I'm not gonna do the magician thing and do this. I mean, I'm gonna do that in a minute, and Charlie, forgive me. Um, but for now, so why would I be doing this over the deck? I'm making a justification by, for that by putting the deck over here. Why am I putting the deck over here? This is a very important thing to do when you're creating deceptive moments is ask yourself, well, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? Everything has to be justified and you don't explain these things to the audience. You just do them and then they can figure out for themselves why you did it. If I do this and then do nothing else, then it, it's, it becomes obvious that I did it so that I could switch the card. If I give myself a justification, then it blurs the re it blurs the reason why I did it because I'm offering an answer if that makes sense. So the magnets here, I go over the seven fast enough so that it collects it. The change happens. The deck goes here, and then I spread. And now you see a face down card in the middle, and I can take this out and show you the seven of heart. It's a very kind of surreal strange moment which I aim for that I love 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 anything surreal or strange that you can't really find a place for that kind of makes you feel a little unsettled and uncomfortable this is it me putting the deck over here me going over the seven of hearts to go over here is justified by spreading the card by the spreading the deck because there are no breaks in what I'm doing because there are no breaks in any part of this, it is difficult to figure out what happened. Not that anybody probably would or or, or care, because all, all that's impressive here is the fact that the seven changed into a nine, and then I don't want them asking, hold on, where did the seven go? Because they'll probably figure it out, they'll probably think, ah, oh, he picked it up under the deck somehow, perhaps with magnets, who knows? I mean, people are intelligent. So I'm gonna give them an answer for everything so they can't ask any questions. Another a very important thing to remember when you're creating the deceptive expressions, don't leave any questions behind other than perhaps how did you do it? We don't want them to ask that question seriously so that they start figuring it out. But I don't want, to, want them to ask any questions like why is he putting the deck over there? So we answer every question so that there's no room for questions. So magnets here, magnets there, nine of clubs is underneath. I pick up the magnet like so, that goes down. I spread, 
I open this here and then I turn this over and the flow of it leaves no questions or at least questions that I don't want asked. So let me do that full speed as a performance. I take the deck from the table. I go over here and spread. I make you look over here by just separating the cards and moving and then I can do this and then we can carry on with our trick. So this will lead me up to a trick where we use the seven of hearts and the nine of clubs. Perhaps a blackjack routine, perhaps a, I don't know, it's up to you from this point once you know the trick. <laughs> 